Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to talk about veneer, cutting veneer, um, different uses for it, and particularly why do I need veneer? And can I make this by hand? Hmm. Let's dive in and take a look at it. So for a long time, I've been wanting to make a clock, and I've had this book now for probably about three years. Uh, it comes with plans and other things like that. I'll leave a link to this down below if you want to see that. And so I'm, I'm planning on making a clock here, but one of the things I need is I need plywood for it, because if you make all the clock gears out of real wood, they will warp and change over time, and that just doesn't make for a good clock. So if you make plywood, they'll be far more stable and last longer. But I'm in a hand tool shop. I don't want to just go buy plywood. I want to actually make it myself. So later on, I'm going to be showing how to actually cut veneer out of a log or board and then glue it into plywood. Um, that has a whole video in itself of how do you take wood from a board or a log and then turn it into cross grain plywood, the things you need for a clock. Today I want to actually talk about this little gym and some of the fun things you can do with this, particularly how do you actually cut veneer to size? Because something thin and flexible, if you take a saw to it, you're just going to rip it apart. So first off, before we actually start looking at the veneer, I want to look at the veneer saw and some of the fun things about this. So this is a veneer saw from Gramercy Tools, um, Tools for Working Wood, and I just got this in, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, incredibly heavy, you can see the, the backer on this. One of the interesting things about this, you can release the, the teeth here, and you can actually pull the blade out, resharpen it, and resaw the blade. Um, they also come with different tooth patterns because throughout years, in different traditions, uh, there are different tooth patterns that you can get to this. So here we have what is considered a French style cut. All the teeth are pointing to the middle. They're all cut at 90 degrees, so they're a very aggressive cut. When this side is going in this direction, it's going to cut very deeply. However, if it goes in the other direction, like this side going across this way, it's going to have a very shallow and easy cut that doesn't skip around so much. So this is a little bit of a flexible style. Most of the English saws actually have the same tooth pattern, but they continue this same angle going all the way across, rather than having the teeth coming together in the middle. The German style, actually rather than having these 90 degrees, often have a 60 degree cut. So rather than being aggressive cutting teeth, they're more or less just barbs sticking out and pointed. Another thing you'll notice about the blade is you can see here there's no set on this. Actually there's a bit of a reverse set. So the teeth here all come to a point. They are all a sharp arrow point. So you're kind of like a knife slicing through the wood as opposed to having a tooth set out. And what this will do is it will cut into the, th the thin wood and sever it as opposed to cutting it out or removing chips and curls. So if I were to draw a profile of this, the back of the blade is perfectly flat. And then where the teeth are at, there's actually a bit of a chisel, comes off at an angle there, and then it's flat down this way, these two sides being parallel with an angle right here. And so all the teeth are cut in with an angle here. This way you get a really nice flat, clean cut on the side here and then you can get a little deeper into the thin material, having it wedged like this. So it's kind of like a chisel, but then all the teeth are cut into the end if you look at it in profile. So here we've got this homemade veneer that I made, um, and you'll be seeing a video coming out soon about actually resawing this out of the board. This particular one is about a millimeter thick, uh, so it's, it's relatively thin, uh, especially for hand cut. Most of the time, a lot of hand cut veneer is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. But if you buy the stuff from the store, you get this stuff, which is about a half a millimeter thick. So if I put this on here, it actually comes out to, yeah, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 millimeters thick. So this is the stuff you can buy from the store, which is very easy, but it's going to take a lot of thicknesses to get up to the thickness of plywood needed. But this is great for actually veneering a surface. If you have a larger substrate of a cheaper wood, you can buy this really thin veneer glue it on top of there and you have a nice looking piece of wood even though it's solid wood from what's underneath. So there's a little bit of difference. If you hand cut your own, this is a little more sturdy and you can generally do this with a regular handsaw, which I'm going to show you that. But for this thin stuff you get from the store, this is really, really delicate. If I get a back saw in here and I try to slice across that, there's a very good chance I'm going to tear it out and rip this apart because it's, it's just so thin and delicate. Um, yeah, you got to be careful. So let's actually look at cutting these up. So first we're going to be working with this shop made veneer. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier. And so for this case, I can put a board down here. I can grab a handsaw and I can actually cut this just with the handsaw. I just have to be careful that the set of the teeth doesn't cut into it too much. Just take my time. And this is a carcass saw with a cross cut teeth. And I'm just going to very carefully and slowly cut across it. And there we go. 
I have a nice clean edge to this ready for the work I'm looking for. So you can do it with just a normal saw, but as you can see, it's a little bit finicky. Uh, but with a thicker veneer like this, it kind of is useful. So that's where our good veneer saw comes in. You have these teeth that cut very differently. They're not a normal cross-cut saw. And if you are having a problem with a lot of things sliding around, you can actually reverse the angle on this French cut so you can be getting an easier cut with it. Or you can rotate it this way and then cut on the backstroke and get a very heavy cut in there. And so if you're working with really thick veneers, um, Gramercy Tools actually makes one called the King Kong Blade that is designed for really thick veneers and very useful for that. But in this case, I'm going to cut with the aggressive side of the blade, set down in here, and with a few passes like this, we can get right down through this. And if you find yourself sliding around and being having a hard time holding onto this, clamping it between two boards really works well. And now, we don't have to spend as much time thinking about holding it in place, we can just make sure we're cutting all the way down to depth. And so with a good bit of effort, we can then cut this down to the length we need. Now, Thick veneer like this is nice because it is a little bit flexible. It's something you can work with regular saws as well as a good old veneer saw. But most of the time, people aren't going to go through the effort of making their own veneer. They're going to be buying stuff. So how exactly do you cut this thin stuff? So for thin stock like this, I actually have two sheets here. I'm going to put a square edge on here so I know my fence is square across because I really want this cut. And I can then take this, hold it in place, and you'll see it's a little bit faster to cut through this half millimeter thick stuff as opposed to the other stuff, which is only one millimeter thick. Just that extra half a millimeter really makes a big difference. And just like that, we have some perfectly cut sheets of veneer. And so to show it again, it cuts really cleanly really quickly and you get these perfect, perfect shears all the way across. If you ever tried to do it with scissors, you're just going to be splintering this apart and shattering it. Um, even really good shears just don't cut veneer very well. And that is where a veneer saw really shines. Now you're going to see on Amazon quite a few other veneer saws where they'll have a cutting tooth on this side and a cutting tooth on this side. Rather than, rather than having the handle here, they have a handle that kind of comes out at a weird angle. So you'd have the veneer saw here and the handle kind of out this way. Those are really uncomfortable to use because the hand is not in line with it. You're putting pressure out here rather than on top of it. And this is just really useful because it's all right there and you can slice very quickly and very easily. Um, this makes it fantastic. Now, I'm not sponsored at all by Gramercy Tools or Tools for Working Wood. I just purchased this one. Um, I'm thinking about actually getting one of the other blades, the King Kong blade, to have a little bit of fun with that as well. So these are incredibly fun. And I'll leave a link to this down below um, if you want to see the exact same thing. Veneer can be some really fun stuff to work with, especially when you want to get those weird exotic looks if you want, you know, the bird's eye or something fun like that with the curls. Getting some veneer and applying it down on a surface is a great way to add a little bit of fun to it. And then if you want to get into some of the marquetry and shapings like that, veneer is a great way to do that. Now there are a lot of other methods. You can use a bird's mouth and a fret saw to cut into that. You just have to be very careful not to shatter it. And that's why one of the veneer saws are probably the most accurate, quick, and easy ways to cut standard veneer. If you are going to be making your own shop veneer, you probably don't need a veneer saw because a regular cross-cut saw, as long as the handle doesn't get in the way, will treat you very well. So have a little bit of fun with your imagination. There are a lot of things you can do when you know how to cut and work with veneer. And I'm thinking about doing a few other videos with veneer in the future. If there's anything particular you'd like to see, uh, let me know that. We'll uh, look at doing some other fun things along that line. So soon we will be having the video coming out with plywood and actually making some plywood for the clock. And then we'll have the video coming out with making the clock. Uh, lots of interesting things along that line. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If there's something particular you want to see, let me know. If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, become a member, click the join button, join us on Patreon, you know, all those fun things. All of those really do help out and any of them you can do really make a big difference from this channel. So thank you for that. I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Veneer joke. Veneer joke. Wow. My dad jokes are starting to run a little thin. Happy? Sad. Happy? Sad. Perfect. Um, oh, I guess.